Well, hey there, I'm Jeremy Wallach, local church pastor, and today excited to continue a conversation with Greg Finke on the topic of discipleship and specifically how uh, does a person do discipleship, so to speak. In 2011, Greg started Dwelling 114 uh, with a ministry of helping uh, hundreds of churches and thousands of leaders, specifically on the topic of discipleship. He's also the author of three books on joining Jesus on his mission around the topic of discipleship. And in our last conversation, we mostly talked about what discipleship is and why it's important uh, that discipleship is being trained to follow Jesus' ways for the good of others in our daily life. And the why is basically because Jesus did it and sends us out to do it. Uh, and we heard from a, a few listeners basically asking for more of the how. Uh, from Karen and Katie, we heard, uh, I'd especially like more of the how and how to start, uh, knowing that there are different ways discipleship can look. And that's, that's a great point, too. And then we heard from Jackie, uh, what causes anyone in my congregation to want to be discipled? How can I show them there's something for them to gain or benefit from being discipled and or discipling others? How would you target or approach people that need to be discipled, but don't think they need to be discipled? Uh, so Greg, there's the big question. How do we do discipleship? Yeah, well, uh, no, and I... Uh, uh... The uh, uh, kind of the beginning point uh, is always uh, clarity leads to intentionality. If I'm not clear about what discipleship is and how Jesus does it, not just how I think it should be done, but how Jesus does it, then I'm going to be kind of uh, replicating what we see all over the North American church, which is this um, unclear hodgepodge all over the place, anything almost counts um, a way of, quote, discipling people. But if we have clarity about what it is, yes, why we're doing it, and then how to do it, well, guess what? Then a lot more people can get off the bench and start uh, participating. And uh, that's why I really appreciate those questions. The last time we were together, uh, we talked more about the what and the why. And, uh, um, and that's part of gaining clarity, no doubt. But um, the, uh, uh, the way that I kind of help people begin to realize maybe they're not as clear as they think they are uh, is by having them simply sit down with a piece of paper and I say, please illustrate, draw out your church's current discipleship process. And, um, you know, eager pastors uh, start, start to do that. And uh, I usually say after like two minutes, if you're not done yet, you probably don't have a very effective discipleship process. <laughs> In other words, because right. it's probably much more complicated and much more uh, uh, burdensome than what really uh, has been shown to be effective. Lay people, they tend to have a very simple uh, process. If somebody they meet wants to be discipled, uh, they go introduce them to their pastor. <laughs> pretty right. straight right? and then uh a lot of times uh we'll have you know uh churches that kind of they're 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 very much trying uh to uh um, have things that that include people uh and they they uh draw out and then what they end up drawing out is what you and i would describe as an assimilation process how to get them involved with ministry and programs and classes uh, but if, you know, but if the goal is a simulation, then that's one process. But if the goal is full participation in the mission of God as a daily lifestyle, it, it, it's, it's not producing that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where it's really helpful. And I would encourage our, our listeners to start with that. Write down on a piece of paper the, you know, the illustration, a flow chart, uh, use, you know, just use words, narrate it if you need to. Uh, and then after we're done with our conversation today, go back and compare what they're doing or trying to do with what Jesus gives us to do and uh, and maybe start thinking through how to reform our way back to his way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, it's like there's a difference between uh, being a believer and being a disciple. And it seems like, you know, a lot of churches put an emphasis on people becoming a believer and then it just 
kind of ends and then anything discipleship wise would be more like hey can you hand out bulletins at the church or you know <laughs> sort of yeah. things but like how do you go from like I'm a new believer or I've grown up in church and I have faith but uh, that distance between or the gap between being a believer and a disciple yeah and and again I don't want to in any way uh, downplay or insult you know programs and classes and 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 being involved in activities at church uh, a simulation is very uh, important part of what we do. It's just if we think that's discipleship, uh, then we really, like you said, we haven't really paid attention to what Jesus is giving us. Um, yes, I first and foremost, we want to be saved by Jesus through the Holy Spirit, by grace, through faith. Right. Amen. But then Jesus himself in Mark 117 says, come follow me. Right. And I'll make you to become, I'll disciple you to be fishers of men. And so what I you know, try to remind people is if you look at your life and you're not a fisher of men, then you haven't been discipled yet, right? At least not in the ways of Jesus. Because Jesus' discipleship process, he says it from the beginning and then he, he says it throughout and then he says it at the end again. It's to prepare us to fully participate in the mission of God, right? So the ways that the lifestyle of Jesus is a redemptive lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of self-sacrificing uh, love. And so he wants to disciple us in that so that we are part of, you know, the redemptive movement of God spreading to the nations. Uh, and then he wants us to disciple others to do the same. So that, again, it's a, it's a multiplication, not just uh, adding slowly, but multiplying quickly. Um, and, and so... That's where to be able to go, hey, I'm saved, I'm in, woohoo. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, but now what are you going to do? You're going to sit on the bench and run out the clock till you die and go to heaven? Or would you like to be a part of a fulfilling, fruitful life um, that is an adventure each day, even as you're going about your fairly mundane everyday tasks, right? Mm -hmm. Going to work, running the kids, mowing the lawn, uh, et cetera. So that's that's the invitation of Jesus when he says, come follow me and I will disciple you is essentially what he's saying to be fishers of men. So, so how then? Uh, like I uh, say, I've got a friend who's interested in growing. They've got faith in Jesus. They want to grow. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, going to Jackie, uh, she has actually two questions, right? Uh, yeah. The, the first one is, you know, uh, is what causes anyone in my congregation to want to be discipled. Then the second one basically is how would you target people that need to be discipled but don't think they need to be discipled? And I want to start I want to start with their second question first, just to get that, because that's that's what a lot of us are, are using up a lot of energy and emotion and leadership horsepower on. And I would suggest that that's wasted energy. Uh, even Jesus, the son of God, couldn't disciple people that wanted to be disciples, right? He proclaimed, here's, here's the new uh, life. Uh, he invited, uh, but he could only uh, disciple people that wanted to. And I would suggest we would do the same, that we, we clearly proclaim uh, the, the, the life in Christ and the adventure before us. We invite people regularly. To cross the line into a discipling process, but ultimately, uh, don't worry about those that aren't ready yet, because they they're just not ripe. They they will be ready, or they have an opportunity to continue ripen. And frankly, the stories that we tell of other people that have been on the discipling journey, living that life of love for the good of others, will be help accelerate that. So. Um, I always say, don't worry if not everybody wants to be discipled. Even Jesus, the son of God, couldn't disciple everybody because they don't all want to be a disciple. But Jesus, although he had the 5,000 come to him and, and receive from him, he only had 12 that were willing to be discipled by him. And yet it was through those 12 that, you know, the, the world is what it is today. So uh, if you've only got a, a, a fraction of your congregation that wants to be discipled, start with them. Right? Don't worry about the 80% that don't want to. Uh, if we start with a few, the, the many will eventually be uh, 
uh, inspired and gained the insight they need to, to get on board and start their, their journey as well. It sounds like you're kind of alluding to, I mean, basically testimony, right? As far as, uh, you know, that, that core group, that whatever remnant, whatever you want to call it, of people who are being discipled, uh, you're giving them an opportunity or a platform to share their testimony of uh, what God's doing in their life. And that kind of is part of the impetus to other people being interested. Is that right? Yeah. So, and I would call them not the core or the remnant. I would call yeah. them the first wave, right? Sure. Oh, nice. Because it wasn't, Jesus started with 12 and he didn't go, I'm a failure. I only have 12 or, ooh, here's the remnant. No, I said, you're the first. And 12 became 72 and 72 became hundreds and thousands. Yeah. So um, in our congregation, just to give it the same way, this is our first wave. And and yes, um, this, uh, uh, relaying the experiences, what happened last week is a key part of the discipling process, but it's also part of how you help people. Uh, and this is getting to, to the uh, other side of Jackie's question. This is how you help people start to want to be discipled, right? And it's what I call, we don't often talk enough about the payoff, right? We tell mm -hmm. people, here's what we want you to do. Here's why we want you to do it. But at, in, in the end, if I do this, what will I be a part of? What will I see? What will happen? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, if we can be clear about the payoff, that is, we'll be li living a fruitful, fulfilling life. We will see. We will see people start to come back to life. They'll they'll want to know more about things. Uh, they like being uh, around us and having conversations. Uh, and and of course, the real illustration of that is the stories of the people themselves. And so, being able to uh, have and we we talk about having take ten conversations, uh, taking ten minutes at the beginning of every elder meeting, council meeting, committee meetings, Bible study, rehearsal, youth, children, whoever is getting together to take 10 minutes and talk about, hey, how's it going out there? What's God showing you? What do you who, how's loving your neighbor going? What are you learning? What's next? And by having those kinds of opportunities, people that aren't participating hear those stories and it starts to click light bulbs on and connect dots. And uh, again, that's that's the how do we get people to want to? Uh, I can't make them. I can't force them. Uh, but what I can do is make sure they're hearing the stories of the payoff for those that are actually doing this. You know, mm -hmm. the fruit of it, if you like a more biblical word than payoff. <laughs> sure, sure. Amen. Yeah. All right. So you got somebody who wants to be discipled. They're open to being discipled. What do you do with them? Yeah. Well, the first thing that we like to, to uh, help them understand is, you know, again, and not to go over material we've already been over, but it's important for them to understand, you know, uh, what is discipleship? And what I mean by that is not the general definition. It's a training process. But what are we inviting them into? OK, uh, because if we don't understand what I'm being invited into, either I'm going to be like, what? This is what we're doing. I, I'm out uh, or I'll be confused and. So uh, I like to talk in terms of as I'm having a, a conversation with somebody that wants to be uh, a, a disciple maker, uh, I say, keep in mind three things, ratio, relationship, lifestyle. Now, the reason we want clarity on that is ratio means uh, we want it to be a, a low number. One person to one person would be great. One person to two or three people is 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 great too. But even Jesus, the son of God, only had 12 people, right? Mm -hmm. So I used to think when I was a young uh, whippersnapper pastor that if I, if I got up and I taught God's word, preached God's word, people understood it, people believed it by the power of the Holy Spirit, I had discipled them. So mm -hmm. I can disciple hundreds. <laughs> and the reality is, no, I could... I could teach hundreds, I could proclaim to hundreds, but I was not discipling them because while uh, proclamation and scholarship is part of the process, it's not the whole thing. So ratio means uh, Jeremy, the disciple maker, has one, two, three, four people, but not a whole lot more than that. Number two is relationship, that this is something that is a want to opportunity. People need to want to be discipled 
and to meet regularly. Uh, and so it's not just scholarship, it's relationship. And, uh, and that relationship then leads us to number three, which is lifestyle. And so uh, how are we living? And it's the, it's the lifestyle that we are wanting people to be able to take note of and to start imitating. Uh, the, 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 the biblical truths that surround that lifestyle are all important. But let's remember those biblical truths are simply uh, revealing and defining what that lifestyle is. It's not the lifestyle itself, right? Me sitting and understanding the lifestyle is not the same as living the lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why lifestyle. So uh, again, going back to Mark 117, come follow me. That that's He's talking to individuals, come into this relationship and watch how I do this. I'll make you fishers of men. Or uh, Philippians 317, Paul says, um, join with others in following my example and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. And again, that he calls the, you know, he, he's, a, he's a doctrine guy, right? And yet what it all comes down to is lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So small ratio, relationship and lifestyle. Uh, and so then, then, that, then we're in a good position to go, okay, I've got one or two friends uh, we, we maybe got a small group of people. Uh, we have, we want to be here to be discipled, to be, uh, take up the, the, the teachings of Jesus in our daily lives for the good of others. Uh, and we know it's a lifestyle. And, and now we can get down to that, the, the how. Um, so Jesus, Jesus, in that context of small ratio, relationship, lifestyle, has three parts to his discipling process. Again, you can have any any number of parts you want, but if you're asking what's what's the clear, simple process Jesus had, it was basically three things: proclamation. Let, let me teach you these words. Uh, so words reveal worlds, right? Um, he, he's pulling back using words so that they now understand uh, what he is inviting them into. Um, and so, like Paul said, how will they know unless they hear? So proclamation. The second thing is imitation. Come follow me. Uh, I need you to uh, see how I live out my teachings for the good of others so that you can imitate those. Um, I like uh, Hebrews 13, 7 says, take note of the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith, right? So uh, the, the proclamation is, let's see what God's word says. Imitation is, let's go put it into play and and and, and, and uh, I need a, a model and a mentor, someone that's going to model it for me and mentor me in it, thus that relationship, right? And, uh, and by the way, we can model and mentor to it each, each other. It's not like we have to have a guru and the rest of us are grunts, uh, but, but we can be in a circle helping each other with this. And then finally, replication, because that's how Jesus' movement went from uh, you know, several to uh, dozens and dozens to what we have today is is building in replication that I go and start to disciple other people, and uh, that and that replication leads to multiplication. But it's not something that happens after only after I understand everything and I'm an expert myself. Uh, I can help somebody uh, get started. Uh, I'm not perfect yet. I don't know everything, but I can show you what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my uh, daughter uh, is currently on a uh, mission trip to Turkey. Uh, she's leading a group of young adults. And she texted me the other day that uh, she, uh, a guy from Syria, she had taught him how to throw a football. Now, first of all, I was like, that's my girl, you know, uh, spreading the good news of football around the world. Uh, and, uh, and back. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so uh, then, then, then she said, yeah, I'm not very good, but I could show him how, right? So I'm not a great quarterback. I'm not going to, mm. Packers are never going to ask me to try out, but I can show them how to throw a football. And that really is uh, uh, what we need to become much more comfortable with. Sending out people, they don't know everything yet, but get going out and helping their family, maybe another group of friends at work in the neighborhood who are willing, 
how to start following Jesus too. Hmm. And that, then we start to see multiplication going out. And I heard somebody say that, uh, like within leadership, that there's natural leaders and there's learned leaders, and that you actually can't learn anything from a natural leader, uh, mm -hmm. but you can learn a lot from learned leaders uh, because they they make mistakes. They have to try to figure out how to do it, so they they work at it, and you learn more trying to learn how to be a leader yeah. uh, than just people for whom it comes naturally. And yeah, thinking of your daughter's football experience and just. You know, like, I feel like there's so many Christians that are afraid to say like, oh, I'm going to try to disciple someone because I haven't, don't have the Bible memorized. And I don't know, I don't have perfect polished answers on all these different questions yeah. they might answer. Uh, but yeah. there's, there's something more profound in the vulnerability and the kind of uh, authenticity, I guess, of just willing to go into that relationship, uh, not feeling like the expert. Yeah. Well, and the question then becomes, what do we, what are we aspiring to be experts in, right? And I would suggest that it is not scholarship. In fact, Jesus, while he was the very word of God made flesh, he kept summing up all the law and the prophets and the writings, right? He kept making it simple. He's like, yep, all 39 books of the Old Testament are, are deep and amazing and full of all, but here's what it all means. Love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. At the end, Luke 24, he's, he, he says, you know, the, all, all these things in the law and the writings and the prophet had to be fulfilled, right? And then it says these amazing words, and he opened their minds to the scriptures, right? Now, that, I, I used to think, wow, I wish he'd crack my head open and I would have all the knowledge of the scriptures. But then I realized that actually the very next thing is what he was opening up. The Son of Man must suffer, die, rise again, and the forgiveness of sins should be preached to all nations. And I'm like, that's what that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. right? And so now, no, I I don't I don't I'm not an expert on Habakkuk, right? I don't I don't get a good deal of what Ezekiel was doing, right? That some of that stuff's just weird. But here's what I know. It somehow points to Jesus being the son of God, died and rise in forgiveness of sins, right? And, and so I don't need someone to be trying to convey all the depth of the knowledge they have to other people. What I need is to show them what Jesus said was the goal of his discipleship process. And what Jesus hmm. said was uh, John 13, 35, that this is how people will know that you are my disciple, how you love, right? And right before 35 is verse 34, where he's like, as I have loved you, now you love one another. And so that is that is the essence of discipleship, me learning how to get over myself so I can recognize opportunities to offer a little bit of love in word, action, or just standing alongside somebody. Mm. And, then, and then having a group of people to come back to to talk about it. Uh, so that it becomes more and more uh, my 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 normal lifestyle, right? The goal of discipleship is basically us going, hey, this is who I am and this is what I do. I am a beloved, forgiven child of God, and I I got a job, I got a family, I got to go, you know, do some chores, uh, and I got to go do all that. But but that's who I am, and this is what I'm actually here to do. I'll be doing all that stuff, but here here's what I'm really here to do look for people who need a little love and then offer that to them, right? Mm -hmm. And so if, if I can remember, this is who I am and this is what I'm here to do. And then I have a group of friends, right, that are on that journey too. We're discipling each other. Uh, that is the essence of it. And yeah, I'll have the rest of my life to dip down into Habakkuk or the idiosyncrasies of Le the Levitical law or what in the world is Paul talking about, you know, in Romans, you know, name your chapter. Uh, that's all important, right? But we, we, if we think I got to have all that nailed down before I start, then that, that's falling right into the devil's scheme of us never getting there. And now instead of a worldwide movement of redemption spreading quickly, it's shut down because everybody's got their nose in a book thinking they're not smart enough to do this. Hmm. Right. Now, well, and the people I guess here. I've encountered who who seem to want to disciple through teaching 
everything they know tend to repel people uh, way more than attract people too, right? Yeah. Well, what we're doing, and again, I, I'm, 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 I'm admitting, you know, I did this for years, and that's why it's like blinding flash of the obvious, right? But uh, like I said, I thought that uh, me teaching clearly and accurately and thoroughly the Word of God so that people understood it, and then by the power of the Holy Spirit believed it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. and, and so then after 10 years of that, what I realized is they had a, a thorough knowledge of God's Word and still had no clue about how to seek the kingdom, how to love their neighbor, how to you know, do these very fundamental things that Jesus actually gives us to do uh, because we had never gotten around to, oh, we've read about it, we understand it, we believe it, but how do you do it? And, and that was kind of the, like, the aha moment for me. And again, I, uh, we're, uh, the, the other result of that, of course, is we, we, we may as well just admit it up front, discipleship is just for the smart kids. Hmm. right if you're not that great at accumulating lots of theological knowledge and synthesizing all together you know come to church sit in the pew you can call it good and uh, but but those of you that really like that come to class and by the way if you're really good at that we'll send you to seminary <laughs> rather than hey no um you know the the disciples even after three years with jesus the, the, the Pharisees looked at him and said, these are unschooled, ordinary guys, mm -hmm. but they have been with Jesus, right? Uh, Luke yeah, 24. I actually just read this morning uh, that X 413, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, uh, in, in the Greek, that word translated ordinary is idiotai. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I just learned that this morning, but uh, yeah. they're unschooled idiot men. Yeah, uh, they were astonished, uh, but they realized they'd been with Jesus. And, you know, it's yeah. that being with Jesus uh, that's more important than your IQ or vocabulary or whatever else. Yeah, well, think about this. At, uh, and, and by the way, uh, for the sake of Karen, Katie and Jackie, we are going to get to the how. But the how is so simple. Once you understand mm -hmm. what it is, that it really doesn't take very long. So this last thing. The disciples, uh, Jesus in, in, in Luke 24 and again in Acts 1, uh, he says basically uh, the power they have is the Holy Spirit and their stories, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of that time with them, uh, they, they were not the sharpest theological knives in the drawer. At that point, the Pharisees could have still run circles around them because they did have uh, decades of teaching and study under their belt. But what Jesus said, the Holy Spirit would use most powerfully. He says, you, you saw all this, right? You were with me. You saw it. And you will be my witnesses, right? And, and so that's where I like to tell people who can't keep up with all the doctrines and characters and sequences of Scripture. I was like, you know what? Um, that's where you got a pastor. Let, let him keep up with that. Hmm. What I want you to focus on is why do you trust and follow Jesus? That's your story, right? And, and, and by the way, within that, all will be all kinds of theological important stuff, right? And yet it's conveyed through a story of a lifestyle lived, right? And, and that's what I think we sometimes, not sometimes, I think we underestimate that and undervalue that uh, because we're always forever thinking, well, I wish I knew more about the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my goodness. I, I know people have been studying the Bible for decades and decades and decades, and they, they have as many questions now as ever, right? Because every time mm -hmm. you get some clarity, then you have a new mystery that opens up. Nothing wrong with that. I love that stuff, right? But, but what are we discipling them uh, to be able to participate in? It's the mission of God, and the mission of God is only accomplished through God, right? It's the death and resurrection of Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. And what does that look like as it's going out? It looks like love being lived out, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, discipling people to understand what God says and then go out and put it into play for the good of others 
in a way that looks like something loving just happened, that's 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 just, that's how you have a, a, a redemptive movement uh, multiplying quickly throughout neighborhoods, communities, and to the world. So um, if if we're going to ask answer the question, uh, how do it, it's time to sit down and actually disciple, right? I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I want to make sure I have my blind spots in view, that I'm not sitting down with 100 people thinking I'm going to disciple them, mm -hmm. that I'm not That's sitting true. down simply with scholarship thinking I'm going to disciple them, but a small ratio of people who want to be discipled by me, relationship, and the focus is going to be how to put my identity in Christ and my purpose in Christ into play as a daily lifestyle for the good of others. So what I got all that in mind, proclamation, imitation, replication, right? But then here's what it looks like we sit down. You know, it's, it's, it's good to be with you, Jeremy. Um, we would have been meeting, you know, on a regular basis. So, you know, I wanna make sure that that I'm, I, I, I have made room in my calendar for this. Um, it doesn't take a majority of my time, but it takes a priority. So I'm meeting regularly with my with my friend Jeremy and maybe a couple other people. Uh, they want to be discipled, and the focus is on Jesus and the teachings of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be any of the 66 books of the Bible, but if we're going to be followers of Jesus, how about let's get to know Jesus? If all the if everything points to Jesus, well, let, let's go ahead and just start there, and then we can work our way out if we want to. But let's start with Jesus. But the, the key is in discipling is what I call the miraculous question. And the miraculous question is, now what? So we're, we're looking at, we're, we, we know Jesus. We're now looking at some of the teachings of Jesus. We understand what he's saying as best as we can. Uh, but, but here's the question. Okay, now what? How will I respond to this and put this Jesus teaching or me imitating Jesus into play this coming week. Mm. Again, clarity leads to intentionality. And if and if I'm seeking to help, if we're seeking to help each other get better at living this life of uh, uh, of imitating Jesus for the good of others, then let's go with it at that level, right? So we've read, we have understood, we believe, and now we ask the question: Well, now what? How will we put this into play this week or look for opportunities to put this into play this week? That's simple. Now we go, we leave, we give it a run, right? Um, but then when we come back, and this is so important, we can do this even with larger groups. We can break them into small groups and do this, but we, we basically have valued whatever, they just went out and did life with Jesus for a week, right? So now it's very important that we go, okay, what happened, hmm. right? Uh, and so we, we ask the questions, what happened? Um, what did you learn? And then what's next? Uh, so that helps them to be, uh, take those experiences as valuable, as meaningful. And, you know, we talk about what went well. We talk about what didn't go well. Mm -hmm. But both cases, what did we learn? What did we learn about God? What did we learn about ourselves? What did we learn about, you know, the 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 uh, 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 the process of connecting with people that don't know Him? What did you learn? And then now that we've learned these things, what's what's next? How are we going to put that into play? And then and then we can we can take all that, and now we go and we we uh, we go back to Jesus' teachings, right? And that begins to accumulate. But it makes a lot more sense to regular unschooled idiotic people because now it's based in experience, not just the the uh, the concept or the abstract mm -hmm. theology, but in putting those things into play, which is what he told us he wanted us to do anyway. Uh, by the way, as we send out uh, our our uh, uh, the people that we're discipling, we also start to uh, ask them, who are you discipling? So again, the, we're building in right away replication, and mm -hmm. it can be their own family, right? If they're, if they're you know, a wife or a husband or a or father or a mother, uh, that they can uh, disciple and and put into play the same thing that we're doing together. They can do with their family, or start to look for a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, 
who is interested in, in learning more about how they can uh, follow Jesus and live out their lives for the good of others. And you might think, oh my goodness, well, how, how realistic is that to think that could happen? I'm letting you know that if you just start asking around, right, you start finding out a little bit more about your buddies than their Packer fans or their favorite beer, you'll find that they have an inner life just like everybody else. They've mm -hmm. got questions, they've got concerns. And uh, as I have uh, had conversations with people, uh, you're, you can start asking, hey, would you be interested in getting together and learning about more how you can follow Jesus and, and, uh, and live a life uh, for the good of others? And I'm letting you know, uh, there's a lot of people that don't go to church that are still interested in, in that, as long as they know me well enough to, to want that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, if they don't know me, it's going to just be weird. <laughs> Hi, right. I'm great. You're going to come be discipled by me? Like, uh, no thanks. Uh, but on the other hand, people that I've been, you know, loving my neighbor, enjoying hospitality, uh, laughing, you know, then we start to know their story. And now you can say, hey, if you're ever interested, I have a group of people that we get together regularly with, or I'd, I'd love to have a cup of coffee with you every Saturday and, and we could talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, we, we well, and new like, disciples still know a lot of people who aren't disciples of Jesus. Whereas, yeah. I mean, I guess at our church, I think of like it seems to be that people who are growing in their faith end up building communities of friends here, uh, and and then they're here for a prayer group or they're here for Bible study and they're here for worship and they're helping with worship. And all of a sudden, it seems like the bulk of their friend group ends up being active uh, believers at our church, as opposed to, you know, newer believers who still know a lot of people who aren't walking that out. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, the good news is even those folks that have become somewhat church friend focused, mm -hmm. uh, we have we can help them uh, because we don't need them to know everybody in the neighborhood or everybody at the workplace. Just one. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so intentionality leads to, uh, or clarity leads to intentionality with that too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just to recap then, you know, how do you disciple people real easy? Um, that we regularly get together. We unpack what happened last week as we sought for better or worse to follow the ways of Jesus for the good of others. You know, again, what happened? What did you learn? What's next? Then we come back and we start wherever we left off, Mark chapter three or whatever it is. Um, we, 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 at the end of that, we go, okay, now what, what, how will you respond to this teaching? What, what's, what's he given you to believe or do for the good of others? We go out with that clarity. We look for opportunities to put that into play next week, as well as, uh, you know, the basics of, of, uh, you know, living a life of love, uh, following the example of Jesus who loved me and gave himself for me, uh, uh, Ephesians 5, 2. Um, and we come, we, we, we send them out to do that. We remind them, hey, uh, who are you discipling? I'm discipling my family. I'm discipling my buddy at, at work. Uh, how's that going? Uh, it's, uh, you know, then you can, you can work through those questions too. But ultimately you head out. And, you know, this could be anywhere from, a, you know, a, a 45 minute lunch um, you know, at, at, during work week, all the way to more of a, uh, a, a, a less uh, intense, uh, relaxed setting, you know, maybe in our homes on a, on a, on a Thursday evening or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. uh, but but, but the, the key is it's God's word, proclamation, imitation, putting that into play, talking, you know, sharing stories, uh, which is how we model and, and we can mentor each other. You know, what's working, what's not, what's next. Uh, and then we head back out again, the replication. And, uh, and, and what that does is, in my experience, that dramatically accelerates them becoming uh, self-motivated followers of Jesus. Hmm. Because it's not, I got to learn more, learn more, learn more, not ready, not ready, not ready. It's like, you got clarity? Yep. Okay, let's give it a run, see what we find out. And what they find out is, oh, my goodness, Jesus is out there, right? Uh, when we use love, it doesn't like, it's not magic, but love works. And as I keep doing that and learn how to humble myself and uh, take a deep breath and just, uh, you know, do what it is that I've been given to do, 
which is not sell Jesus, it's to imitate Jesus. Um, they, their life just boom opens up, and uh, and it it's um, and it's simple and it's fulfilling and all and it's very fruitful. Uh, I was just on the phone earlier today with a lady that um, uh, she's going to lead her whole congregation uh, through this process now, and the only reason she's motivated is because she had that same kind of aha. She was reading the book, you know, joining Jesus on his mission. And then she went across the street uh, and saw a neighbor, not thinking this was joining Jesus time. She she was reading the book. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Put it down. Like most Christians, you read a book uh, about Christianity, put it down. And now let's get back to reality. And all of a sudden she's having this conversation in the uh, driveway with her, with her neighbor, never saw it coming. And in the back of her head, she's like, holy cow, this is what they were talking about in the book. Mm-hmm. And then she goes back realizing, oh, my goodness, this really is how God works. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had to have this, you know, all kinds of mechanics in place and everything. And no, it's just live with awareness and readiness and God will drop things in your lap. So um, that's that 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 experience accelerated everything. And that's frankly why Jesus, he taught them, right? But then he said, come with me. Let's go, let's go put this into play. Mm-hmm. And it really accelerated him when he sent him out, right? You go, mm-hmm. you go do this with others. And uh, and uh, all of a sudden, these unschooled ordinary men, they they were still unschooled and ordinary, but they knew what the kingdom of God was about. And they had stories about that. And they knew how to participate in that. And that's that's what's at hand for us too. We don't have to be the theologically sharpest knives in the drawer. We just have to be a half hour ahead of the ones that we're that we're discipling. So we have stories too. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's awesome. That's exciting. And I don't know, makes me want to reach out to a few people today. So uh, thank you for your time and for your sharing. Uh, for people who are looking more info on Greg, he's got three books, Joining Jesus on His Mission. Joining Jesus, show me how. Joining Jesus as a family. And if you go to dwelling114.org, you've got all those materials or also on Amazon. Uh, any last words from Greg? Yeah, and and uh, there's also a contact uh, page. If anybody wants to you know, reach out via email or whatever, and you got a specific question or something I said was unclear, believe it or not, I sometimes am unclear. Uh, Go ahead and email me. I'd love to to chat with you and and help you uh, get started. Okay. Well, thank you, God, for today and for this conversation and for uh, the heart you've given Greg uh, to encourage and equip people to disciple others. Uh, Thank you, God, for the people you've put in our lives, uh, for the people in our circle of influence uh, who who need more of you. Uh, And we pray that you give us eyes of faith uh, and that your spirit work through us. Uh, give us the boldness and the courage uh, to lead as corn, common, ordinary people, uh, but to share you uh, with people who need more of you. Uh, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. Uh, pray you be with each person listening to this. Uh, fill them with your spirit. Uh, guide them. Give them uh, the words and the courage uh, to do what you would have them do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.